<laughs> Hello guys. Wow, it's been a while, eh? Oh my god. <clears throat> it has been a while. Hi Arnold. I saw your message earlier. I'm not sure if I can still retrieve those. So our topic for today, I'm trying to find something here. On my table. Let's see if I can make my audio sound better. Right, so we have four, three, three thousand people watching. Oh my god. <laughs> Sony A9. Wow, <laughs> Mr. Yunus. Whoa, hold your horses, man. <laughs> ano nga ba? Yeah. Exactly, right? Hi John. We John and I we just finished an epic photo shoot and I was so happy and I was, you know, just a second guys. So I'll let you guys gather. Hey, VJ. Man, I'm going online just because of you, man. <laughs> right. Let me fix my things. All right. There you go. Guys, do you like my light? You like the light so far? Okay, let me give you another minute. Hi, Fatma. <laughs> Thanks, BJ, man. BJ, you were saying something. Black crows are, are everywhere. Yeah, I, I know. There are. I mean, you're back in India and we are here in UAE, in Dubai. I see a lot of black crows. Yeah, they are predatory birds, man. Okay, so... What is the best camera to buy? Once and for all, let's as let us um, solve the mystery. What is the best camera to buy? So basically, let's go first to basics. Let's go to the basics first. I know plenty of you guys uh, have been hammering your head what to buy, and you missed already the Jitex shopper um, last week. And until now, you haven't decided yet what kind of camera to buy or what kind of camera you need to buy next time. Camera books. <laughs> Let me discuss you guys first. Um, five different types of cameras. Uh, first is the point-and-shoot cameras. Second are the mirrorless cameras. The zoom cameras the DSLRs and the medium format cameras which is used by professional photographers in the studio and they are quite expensive so first let me go first point and shoot cameras back in the film days you do have these uh, cameras that are instamatics and basically uh, you load the film there's no aperture there's no um, what they call this adjustments manually you just point it and shoot it so that's the that's the whole idea of a point and shoot camera you just point it and shoot it it's basically it replay it was replaced already by the phone by the mobile phones and you can still um, purchase some point and shoot cameras as of now you can still load film 
with it, you can still um, use um, like uh, uh, your regular, uh, shall I say, what they call that, uh, mediums, which is like the SD cards and also the mini, this one, you know, you can stick it in. So this fits this little guy fits in your in your in your um, mobile phone and it basically has that slot here on the SD card and voila uh, micro SD as you call it so that's a point and shoot you can also consider your telephone as a point and shoot and also when you say um, it's you know, having a point and shoot has that advantages. You can carry it around. Um, you can, you know, you can use it for travel. Uh, basically, the limitations are, obviously, most of them doesn't have a manual override. And nowadays, um, you put an app on your camera and you can still do the manual override. But it still lacks that feel of having a real camera. Or... It only like basically instead of like the an opti optical zoom, it only has that digital zoom that makes that pushes when you when you zoom it, it pushes all and it stretches all your pixels on your sensor. And basically, uh, digital point and shoot cameras they usually have a very small sensor, smaller than the APS-C, and you have that limited type of. Um, web ready photograph that you can use for your social medias um, as a web designer uh, we have these two types of um, images that we use in designing you have uh, you have the print for uh, print purposes which is a minimum of 250 dpi or 300 dpi and you know at least you'll have a 3000 pixels length so in back in the days back in the days when i was doing web designing or even now you can still print a decent size of you know at least 2 mb file size and most of the uh, point and shoot cameras does this already you have you can shoot at least a 2 mb you can produce a 2 mb file and it's also good enough for printing most of the times i have a supposed to be like a um a client for a restaurant and i wouldn't name the restaurant his uh, wife mentioned that i can you know i i should speak to to her, to her husband about the fo photo photo shoots and he mentioned no i just use my mobile phone to shoot my food and i was okay <laughs> i mean that's good enough i mean uh, you know, if, if, if you basically have your own business and you want to do your own photography, uh, you know, there's not a problem about that. That's why technology gives us that kind of option. But if you want to have like that quality, if you're looking at that re real quality um, uh, production uh, quality, uh, production quality shots, you should work with professional photographers like I am. I used to get, uh, I have training in food photography and I shot with the biggest restaurants here in Dubai and I was assisting back in the days. And yes, if you really need quality production, quality um, shots, you should work with uh, professional photographers. Other than that, if you have like that budget, budget wise, then you know, you can you can nowadays you can use your smartphone if you want to use it for an a an a4 size print or if you want to um use it for your social media especially during daily postings um also uh so that's point and shoot point and shoot are usually um let me recap that point and shoot cameras point and shoot cameras are usually the small cameras that you can get without the manual override and also the um uh your your mobile phones you can consider that as uh point and shoot cameras nowadays number two mirrorless cameras 
Wow, I have fallen in love with mirrorless cameras back in the days. I was once one of the ambassador for Fuji film uh, cameras and Fuji is such a nice experience having, you know, having to to hold uh, mirrorless uh, uh, mirrorless cameras. Yeah, having, sorry guys, having to hold mirrorless cameras and it is an it, it is an amazing experience uh you know really lightweight um i have my favorite was the um 100s the fuji 100s um what do you call this uh it's not interchangeable lens it's a fixed lens it's a 35 mm lens and it was my favorite no complications you can still have the manual override uh, for a, um, uh, a mirrorless camera, you can still have the manual overrides, but it's lightweight. It it remove the, shall I say the um, SLR? You know the S because the SLR is the single lens reflex. It remove that prism inside the camera. If if I may, this is. Uh, SLR digital SLR and yeah it basically removed this part which is the prism and the prism basically you view here and then you have the reflection there and then it will come out from the lens so that is basically uh, a DSLR camera but the DSLR they removed that completely and had uh, an either an LCD which is an LCD that will sh um, that you will view uh, the viewfinder that you will view straight from the lens or there is a side panel um, what do you call this a uh, a viewfinder on the side and it, it it's also LC LED capable where you can see there's no uh, paraflex um, effect that you know you will have that's why it's so easy to use and it's very convenient um you can you know uh most of the time uh when you're going to shoot outside if you are carrying <laughs> if you are carrying a camera if you are carrying a dslr um you get um you know your secu the security guards always you know try to look look at it as you know you're it's a professional camera and if you have a small SLR or if, if you have a small um, mirrorless, okay, there you go. This is a mirrorless camera. Yay, I found it. So basically what it looks like, you have the lens and this is the sensor already. It's exposed and directly towards the lens. So basically the um, when the image travels from the, um, the lens, from the front of the lens towards the eight the small you know sensor it goes directly without any you know with with a very small distance and in comparison with this big boy it also shakes when you when you click it when you click it you know that's sweet sound <laughs> when you click it it also vibrates so if if you like to have a very convenient lightweight um almost professional quality looking cam uh, 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 quality images go for uh, a mirrorless it also you know there's also like options that it can twill it can you know i mean slrs have these also so just be mindful of what kind of uh you know options that there is and try to go to different um shops and also try to speak with uh the salesperson who was in charge of the brand and try to uh, uh analyze and ask questions ask nice questions and uh, ask questions that it might help you Basically, you know, um, shortlist the right camera for you. 
So that is the mirrorless. That is the mirrorless. Zoom cameras, by the way, zoom cameras, they have a fixed lens as well, but they zoom quite, you know, um, they zoom quite uh, long distance. Uh, most most of the time is, you know, at least 100 a hundred mm or you know at least 200 mm and there's that nikon released that kilometer zoom <laughs> lens that i have no idea of and it it's a funny you can it's so funny you can shoot the moon and see it but obviously you know sometimes it's impractical to use that because it's very bulky but again um there are um cameras for your purpose you buy a camera or you use a camera for its purpose and it doesn't matter whether you know it it fits you i mean having a small camera fits you having a big camera fits you you know that's why there are different cameras for different uses so zoom cameras most of the time um they have this uh ir it also like has that uh motion uh, protection for your cameras uh, stability for your for your shots and most of the time uh, moms or graduation you see this with you know with the mothers using it and because you are so far away from the stage that you need like a zoom to use it during graduations and or uh, different festivities um, it's a mother camera it's a mommy camera is there any changes in between mirrorless and DSLR when it comes to picture quality? Please share your experience. Well, my experience with the Fuji, I was very astonished. I was very, um, shall I say, not shocked, but for me, it's good enough because the quality that give that the Fuji film gives, uh, based on my Canon, I'm a Canon user. Um, I was very happy with the results and in low light it's amazing but again I went back to F Canon again I went back to Canon because it doesn't support the physical needs that I need physicality meaning to say the ergonomics the size the um the the rubbers you know they 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 uh what they call this they peel off um the ergonomics they're too small for my hand and my hand usually you know it it comes to a point when you're holding your camera for quite some time if you have if you basically have an assignment of that takes a while to shoot the ergonomics of your camera goes a little bit tingy and your hand basically gets like you know tired of holding a small piece that's why sometimes it is easier for me to hold a chunky beast because even the, the 750 is still too small for me it's still too small for my hand but quality wise I am I was happy with the with the fuji range and the only problem was after a while especially in this weather condition maybe after a while the sensor deteriorates i noticed it and the time when i decided to basically um sell everything because i also see how the market drops the market drops uh the time when i was buying you know like a 5,000 dirham lens after a year or a year and a half it goes down to more than 50 percent that's why the <laughs> the selling capability you need to also think because you you know the the, the deterioration of the product and the, the 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 sensor quality was so rapid that i need to basically sell it out and not only that, I need to sell it out because the market rate or the market value deteriorates or uh, I forgot the term in, in financial terms. It goes down very rapidly. That's why I let it go 
um, immediately. Not um, unlike our, you know, trusted DSLRs the, in the market, they have a very, um, shall I say, uh, standard or um, very secure uh, price. Uh, it, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't go down very rapidly unlike you know the um, the the first generation of depreciation there you go thank you very much bj they depreciate very quickly that's why i have um uh, decided to let it go the brand and yeah now i am still shooting with canon and uh i would actually before I continue, I would like to congratulate um, Campix and Usapang Litrato for their amazing excursion um, outdoor shooting. And I was looking at their pages and everybody was so, you know, upbeat and happy going out. Winter has come and shooting again uh, outdoors and I'm very excited to join you guys. It's just that uh, as of now, I was very, very busy during that week and hopefully the next weeks to come we can we can i can join you guys and i w you know i'm very excited to go out and use the camera and use you know drive long drives again and pinch the tent <laughs> shall i say <clears throat> and yeah so that is zoom cameras for you guys so zoom cameras um, they are a fixed lens, but they zoom at least 200 mm. Uh, for me, it's it's it doesn't work for me because again, it's not a, a full frame uh, full frame uh, sensor, and it's also uh, pretty much um, like a family camera. Um, so number four are DSLRs. DSLRs. Oh my dear. Um, I am a DSLR person and I have used uh, Canon I have used Canon uh, all throughout my professional careers and having you know having to say the 750 uh, I have this was given to me during the uh, the photography awards and I was you know I'm still trying to like grasp it I would definitely make a review out of it i am very happy i am happy with it uh it's kind of like it's uh, shall i say in 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 practicality terms it's good enough if you don't have any other option it's good it is a medium range dslr it's full frame it has all the specs that you may need to do a job that you would need to cover it will cover you and i am very confident that this will definitely help you pass your uh whatever what they call this uh what, whatever jobs that you may take uh ju villare villare i'm confused on buying sony 6300 a uh n65 or a7 because I'll be using more photo, but sometimes I will be using videos. Please share your experience. All right. <clears throat> One thing to consider is budget. Very um, important to consider the budget. And having the 6300, this is an A6300. I'm very happy with this so far. I have not used this um, heavily on images on still images i use it on my videos i use this to to vlog the only problem for me is uh, you know it doesn't matter if it's 4k at, as long as it's hd at 1080 as long if i can see myself i wasn't thinking when i got this you know i i was actually still wanted to like cha uh, exchange this with a canon that you know flips into my face you know i am one of the victims <laughs> of this 4k hype you know i couldn't even use 4k to shoot i mean to say to edit because it's too heavy you know then i end up shooting at 1080p but anyways you have to think of your budget 
um, consider your budget. Um, if you if you'd be if you're ready to get the six fifty or if you're ready to get the A seven, then go for it, because I'm not really versed. I'm not well versed with the Sony series. I'm not even sure if the A seven lenses fits the A six five hundred lenses. You know, because the thing is, for me, lenses are more important than the body. Bodies they come and go, but lenses they stay. If you're going, if if you're talking about DSLRs and mirrorless, um, having that's why it's very difficult for a person like me who has established and uh, shall I say uh, invested on glass, and then suddenly if I we decide to change bodies doesn't make sense because I need to buy sets of bodies again uh, sets of lenses again you know so I mean speaking of DSLR because I want to explore vids okay alright yeah I mean guys who will shoot Low light. I mean, who shoots low light? Who shoots at the dark? <laughs> who shoots in the dark? Guys who shoots in the dark are guys who wants to prove that their camera is good in low light. Photography is all about lighting. <laughs> Photography is all about lighting, and it's you're good enough. You're you're good enough if your if your um, uh, camera would shoot at least. A good 3500 ISO with lesser noise and nowadays DSLR cameras or the the sensors that we have in our cameras are quite decent enough even if you shoot on the maximum range you can still uh, work on it on the uh, hey Maki shout out to you man you can still work it on your Lightroom or you can still work it on your you know um, noise uh, softwares you know noise uh, uh, what do you call this on the noise software <laughs> um, where was I okay right for me um, having I, I again I'm not versed on the Sony uh, on the Sony brand but I am I will tell you I am happy with my 6300 if I have enough budget, I'll go for the 6500. But then again, what pisses me off is I can't see myself. I don't need to see myself all the time. I just need to frame myself because I'm going to use again. I made my I made a wrong decision on buying a camera that doesn't flip because my usage is for vlogging to vlog myself. And you know that's one of those. If I can basically, yes, I am. I am very happy with this. If you want, I can share it with you. <laughs> I'm very happy with it. The reason why I bought this, and I also got my um, what do you call that? The the DJI uh, crane too for this because I don't want to buy the big crane for my 5D Mark III or the 5D Mark IV because it's too heavy and um, you know a friend of mine basically advised you know to get this and the gimbal thank you VJ <laughs> thank you for filling my words <laughs> yeah so I bought the gimbal the the crane too and this one and so far I am very happy with those combination with the combo uh yeah i actually i'm not a video shooter but most of the time if there is no uh option of having a videographer on the budget then because i love the client so much then i will you know i will uh give them the value of an added value perhaps of highlights you know so uh where are we so far so different types of cameras recap you have the point and shoot which you consider as your phone and the the cameras that doesn't have manual capabilities mirrorless which are the you know like these the sony's 
and the Fujis and I love those I love them if I can have them I will keep them with me if I'm going to travel I would go for this really lightweight no complications and I'm happy with the quality um, zoom cameras I am not a fan um, although it has its own purpose um, yeah basically I'm not a fan of zoom cameras but again they have their own market they have their own customers they have their own customer base DSLRs <clears throat> yeah again I am a DSLR person uh, I shoot mostly almost every day if I can escape for you know my weekend not using a DSLR I would go <laughs> I will not use a DSLR for a weekend or a family trip or a, you know a camping trip only if I have a really important assignment then I will get my DSLR out thank you BJ <laughs> now medium format or studio cameras there are medium formats that are shaped as a DSLR also like the RS and the RX you know um, I love them and mostly the DSLRs uh, the the medium formats are very you know costly uh, around eight eighty thousand dirhams up um, you can get like you know you can buy a car uh, for that kind of price which is not bad you can settle for a Yaris or you can settle for a 32,000 dirham car instead of buying uh, a 100,000 dirham car and then you know if, if I can pull back time I will get myself a Hasselblad <laughs> a 50,000 dirham Hasselblad and settle for a 30,000 dirham car <laughs> You know, it may it may pay up the bills, but then again, um, mo okay. Now I know you gather any for. Yeah, Ju, uh, please, uh, just keep in touch. We have bigger plans. We have bigger plans in the future. We have. Um, I cannot share you too much of the details but I am we are working on it we are going to have a very nice group an imaging group and I please keep in touch and what you call this I am um, regularly I am doing a lot of uh, videos especially for Godox because you are talk you are watching the <laughs> Uh, what they call this official Godox um, ambassador here in the Middle East, Chris Chris Calumberan, <laughs> basically. So we are finishing the uh, the video for the update of this bad boys, the uh, the the Pro N, and also the Pro C. I can't find the other box, but you know I was happy with it. You know we have updated the firmware, and we in in the video I will, uh, in the video I am going to teach you guys. I will going to um, uh, do the voiceover for the instructions for the uh, what you call this for the um, firmware updates. So the firmware that we have right now is. Waiting for Godox discount. Oh yeah, please, man. Just mention my name. Ha! <laughs> um, Helvis, man. Um, keep in touch. Send me a message, and I will help you. I'll give you a nice advice. How to get your discount? Or <laughs> maybe in the future, maybe we can give away some eighty-six hundred pros. Why? not right <laughs> but um guys again ultimately the best camera that you may need to buy is the camera that speaks your language speaks your language if you're a film shooter if you're a still shooter if you need a bigger file if you need faster reflexes if you need just basic cameras a basic camera if you travel a lot try to list 
<coughs> excuse me, try to list your requirements <coughs> and find the camera that speaks your language. That is, you know, because the, the camera is a part of you. It's a part of your senses. It's a second arm. It's a second hand. Um, it's a second limb, basically. And to be able to maximize your camera is having it a part of you. It has to speak your own language. And also, um, try to... <laughs> Mr. Duke, of course. <laughs> How are you, Duke? Um, shout out to you, man. Um, congratulations with the uh, another exhibition, shall I say, if you have an exhibition. What I'm trying to say is if you have influences, if you have friends who shares <clears throat> the same passion that you have, it does really make sense if you buy the same line brand that they have or get a different camera compared to theirs and then you can exchange and try to also compare notes from them. I mean, buying a camera uh, is like buying a car. You know, you can always, you know, buy a wrong first time camera because there's nothing wrong with you know, getting the wrong camera first thing, you know, on the first time, it's fine because you're going to learn from it. But again, if you want to avoid that kind of mistakes, try to do your research. Try to go for, you know, in, in try if you if you have the money with you, if you have the money with you, try to like, don't buy on impulse. Try to look for three different shops three different shops that has you know um what you call this a, a merchandiser who is capable enough to explain you what type of the what type of uh what you call this the the specs that you are looking for and the best camera to buy there's always google there's always um different uh websites that can share reviews and yeah we are one of those. We're going to share you a lot of um, different types of unboxing, different types of reviews in different tech, uh, whatever is available and, you know, that will be available in the future. We will share you our knowledge in that. So there you go. Thank you guys for watching and I miss you guys. That's why I did my best at least, you know, do a, uh, a very quick live about this topic once and for all what is the best camera to get the best camera to get is <laughs> thank you thank you um the best camera to have is the camera that speaks your language the camera that will serve a purpose and maximize the usage and maximize the capability of the camera and there you go thank you very much have a good evening and enjoy the rest of the weekend cheers